Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Adam Cannon um, here at eLearning Brothers. Today, uh, welcome to this webinar. Today we're going to be talking about Camtasia, per particularly about setting yourself up for success with Camtasia. Um, this webinar will be recorded, so if you have to skip out early or you, you miss part of it, that's all right. Um, with us we have Andrew Townsend, who's our eLearning video evangelist today. Thank you for joining us, Andrew. We're glad to have you with us. Um, if you have questions during the webinar, we'll be ready to answer your questions in the questions panel or during the webinar. So feel free to use the questions panel as you need it. We'll get to as many of these as we can, but if we cannot get to your question, we'll do our best to continue the conversation in the webinar recap that will come out uh, in a few days. Uh, just so you know, one of the things that we like to do after the webinar is to try to follow up as soon as possible. Sometimes it's just to get feedback, but most of the time we want to touch base and find out if anyone needs some one-on-one -on -one clarification about our webinar topics or other information after the fact. And so without any further ado, I will turn the time over to you, Andrew. Great. Thanks, Adam. Uh, welcome, everybody. This is going to be a, a pretty basic tutorial on what you need to know to become dangerous in Camtasia. Um, if you're hoping for more advanced stuff, I apologize that we're not going to be covering too much uh, advanced Camtasia stuff today. But you may find something more along the, the advanced techniques, something more of what you're looking for in our Camtasia blog. So, um, you, I mean, if you don't get what you're looking for here, uh, go to eLearningBrothers slash Camtasia hyphen uh, resources and there's tons of great stuff there. Uh, let me go ahead and get my Camtasia up on the screen. Let me know if you're uh, okay there we go I'm getting uh, feedback that we're seeing it. Okay so here's Camtasia. This is Camtasia 9. If you haven't upgraded to Camtasia 9 since they, uh, the, since they released it last year uh, you are a little bit behind uh, but a lot of the principles that I'll cover today are the same. The user interface uh, looks a little bit different, um, but a lot of the way it, it works and the hotkeys and things like that are are the same. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. We need to add media to our bin. There's nothing to edit here. You can import media. I'll, I'll just click this import media button and I'll bring in uh, this 45k image. I'll click open. There's other ways to import media as well. If you want to uh, if you have your folder open, you can click and drag. Uh, um, yep. So highlight what you need using the shift key, and then click and drag it into your media bin, and it'll it'll import uh, what you need there. All right. So now that we have media here, I'll go ahead and just drag this video onto my timeline. You can also, if you don't want to just drag, you can right click and select uh, Add to Timeline at Playhead. Uh, this just depends on where this playhead is scrubbed to on your on your uh, scrub bar, and it'll place it down there. I per personally click and drag uh, mostly. So now that it's on my timeline, uh, let's talk about uh, quick ways to edit this piece of video that I put here on my timeline. Most important one is to play and pause. So the Camtasia 9 user interface moved the play and pause button smack dab in the center of the screen. You can click play to have it play, and click it again to have it pause. There's other hotkeys to do this. Uh, that is the space bar. If you're new to editing, uh, that is a, probably a surprise for you. Uh, but on across the board, on video editor, space bar is, is the hotkey for playing your video and pausing your video. However, I have recently noticed kind of a glitch with this. If I have... Um, something else recently selected. So right now Camtasia knows that I've clicked on the transitions panel and I want to push play on the playhead and I hit spacebar, it will play my video but also sometimes it selects whatever I've selected last. So if I've opened my animations and I click spacebar and then I click spacebar again, I've had times where it closes this animations panel. So you may want to be uh, aware of that. I've also had uh, the this minus button selected or the plus button selected and then I hit play again and it zooms in or it zooms out again so do know that uh, if you find yourself hitting spacebar and all these different things are happening it's a good there's a good chance that it's because uh, Camtasia is thinking that you're still hovered over an item or still selecting an item 
Um, so that's the first uh, hotkey to know about is the space bar and the potential uh, awkward bugs that I've run into there. Some of you may have run into that as well. The next most important one is this button right here. It's called split. Uh, this is for when you are trying to shorten, lengthen, or cut in any way your uh, your video, your, your media on your timeline. So you can click the split button and it will split this into two pieces or um, I'm going to go ahead and click this undo button or you can hit the letter S and that will split it in half as well. That's a little bit different from other editors. If you use other editors they may use the C button for cut. Um, or the X I've seen on, on one editor, uh, but in Camtasia it's S. So that's one that I use very often. Now it will only split the one that you have highlighted. So let's say that I have this video here. So I have two videos on top of each other. If nothing's highlighted, I hit S, nothing happens. If I highlight the bottom one and I hit S, it cuts the bottom one but not the top one. So this isn't just a solid razor edge, it only cuts what you have selected. So that's something to know about. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is, I've, I've already used it once, is the undo and the redo. This happens all the time in any sort of creative medium. You're going to find yourself needing to undo something that you did. This is very standard. It's control Z and control Y. So control Z will unsplit my, uh, my media and then control Y will resplit it. Uh, control, I haven't seen any limits to how far back they'll go. I've, I've done a, a huge chunk of project before, um, I, I, but I haven't hit those limits yet. I d I'm not one to use Control Y much. I don't know about you guys, but I, I'm definitely more of a Control Z and uh, not much of a redoer at all. Now again, these buttons are here on the time timeline right above the uh, right above the timeline, but those hotkeys can save you time. S, Control Z, and Control Y. Another one is Cut. Now Cut operates different than it does in, say, Word or something like that. Cut, if I just have it here and I hit this cut button, nothing, what I have selected will, will go away. It'll cut the whole entire segment out. If I don't have anything selected and I hit cut, it's impossible. It, it's even faded out. You can't cut. Another thing to think about is uh, these red and green flags on the side of your timeline scrubber. You can drag those apart and it begins to highlight portions of your timeline. Now you do need to know that once it's highlighted, this one is all-inclusive. It's not just what you've selected, it's everything in that segment. So you'll, so if I were to hit cut now, control X, or I could have clicked this cut button, it took everything that was selected inside that segment, cut it out, and then stitched the end pieces together. So if I uh, play this now, you, you'll, I'll just go frame by frame. It suddenly cuts, once we get there, right there, suddenly cuts to where the other end of that flag was. So do know that the cut default does stitch those together and ripple delete everything that's, that's in between. So I'm going to control Z and get that done. Now if you accidentally highlight a segment, dragging the red and the green flags around, uh, it's kind of a pain to try to drag them back in like this, especially if you have a large segment highlighted. So something that you can do is double click on the main scrubber. If you double click here, it brings all of those back together. Um, and, and that's really useful. I, I, unfortunately, when I, I get sloppy when I'm editing sometimes and I'll do something just like this and get frustrated that it's all highlighted or, or that when I'm working really fast and I try to cut something and it, it just doesn't work. So just, just know Double-clicking on that will uh, close up your multiple selection tool. Um, a new feature that they added in the newest version of Camtasia 9 is the Extend Frame uh, hotkey. So if I come here to the very last frame of this uh, media, this video, and I, uh, I mean, if it's this video of a person, it's not going to work as well. Um, but if you have a slide or something like that and you need it to last longer and you want that last slide, what you used to have to do is come to the last slide. That's not very flattering. I'm going to come to a better slide here. You used to have to come to the slide, the, the image that you wanted, click on share and export frame as, and then import that back onto your timeline and then drag it around as it was an image file that you could lengthen or shorten. So what Camtasia's done is they made it so if you hold down the Alt key, 
click Alt, and then drag. You see that the icon changed a little bit to a little square with an arrow, and drag it out. It takes the very last frame and extends it as, a, as if it's an image. Do we have any questions about this? Yeah, so we have, we have a couple questions. Uh, some of them are just review. We have, Claire wants to know if you can show her again where the split button was. Sure. The split button is right above a timeline right here. It uh, is right here. Again, the fastest way, though, is to, to just use the S key. That's the hot key for the split. Okay. Thank you. And then there's a question about how did you go frame by frame? Oh, that's great. That's actually the next step that I was going to talk about. Frame by frame um, uh, is not the arrow keys. They, they changed that, um, and so it's now the caret keys, or the comma and the period. Using those, uh, the comma and the period will allow you to go one frame at a time and scroll through. Of course, if you hold them down, it'll try to play a little bit faster like that. You're probably not seeing it very smooth because GoToWebinar only captures like 10 frames per second. Um, but yes, it's those caret keys or the comma and period keys. Okay, another question is, what is the difference between cut and ripple delete functionalities? Uh, that's great. Um, one is that the cut will copy what you've done uh, to your clipboard so you can paste it somewhere else. Um, ripple delete also, you have to select everything manually. This way it highlights everything so I could have you know 30 tracks stacked on top of each other here and using this technique it would cut all of them. Okay. Um, Nicole makes a comment. When I'm editing the end of the video, it gets to the end. It also play. It auto plays at the beginning again. That's really annoying. Is there any way to avoid that? Um, I haven't run into that. Um, I'll have to. I'll have to look into that. You know what? I want to look into that a lot. Uh, was that from Nicole? You said. Yes. Okay, Nicole. At the end, I'm going to put up uh, an email address. Will you please send that? to that email address and I'll workshop it afterwards and try to get back to you. And we'll get that in the uh, webinar recap as well. I haven't run into that, but I'm sure there's a setting that I can play with to figure out where why that's happening. Um, and then she also asks about um, if you can repeat what you said about extending that last frame. Sure, sure. Um, I'm going to hit control Z a bunch of times to get that all the way undone. Okay. So if I want to extend the last frame, you know what? Let's let's uh, make it an image. No, nope, we'll just keep it this. So if I want to extend this last frame, I hold down the Alt key and hover over the end of my uh, my uh, media object here. So again, I'm holding down the Alt key, and you can see it changed my cursor icon. If I let go of the icon or the Alt key, it goes back. Hold down the Alt key, and it comes into this square with an arrow. And when I drag that, it just takes the very last frame and it'll extend it for as long as, as you can drag it. So now I've got this very last frame coming as an image all the way to the end. And it looks like my last frame is actually a black frame, which is a shame. Uh, let me split and delete here, and now do the alt drag. There we go. And so now it has this uh, last frame as an image all the way through the end. Now it's still considered part of the video, but um, the the point is is you can lengthen that as if it if as if it was an image. Any other questions? Uh, there's a question about can you do that alt drag to extend a frame in the middle of a video? No. So what I would do to do to deal with that is find where I want that extend frame to happen in the middle. Hit the split button. Drag this video to wherever it needs to be, and then do the alt and drag for the middle of the video. So, I guess sort of you can do it. Do it. I think I'm. I think that answers your question. Um, but it it doesn't work the way you'd think it would. You can't just select and then alt drag wherever you happen to be. Got to split it. Drag out the end of it. Okay. How do you hotkey to go back to beginning and skip to the end? To the very beginning and the very end. Yeah. Um. I. Don't use that hotkey, so I don't know. I'd have to look it up. I can look that up again as well. This is another another button that I was going to show you guys um, that I like to use. If I want to see my entire timeline, let's say I'm zoomed way in really far and I've got a lot of complex stuff going on here and I want to be able to see the beginning and the end all at the same time, 
there's this button right here. It's a little magnifying glass. It says bring all media on timeline into view. If I click that, it makes my entire project fit in my timeline. And now I can go to the very beginning and I can go to the very end as well very, very quickly. Um, there is a hotkey for that. It's control shift seven. I never use it. Too many buttons. Once you go beyond the two, uh, two keystrokes, uh, you lose me. I've also gone in and tried to see if I can edit those. So I come to edit preferences and then click hotkeys. And of all of the hotkeys that you can change and edit, that one is not one of them, which is unfortunate because I'd love to make that one something really, really simple. But if you want to change your, your hotkeys for adding animations, adding captions, adding callouts, adding markers, adding quizzes, you can even change what split is here. Um, that's gone, going to edit preferences and then hotkeys. Any last questions before we move on here? Um, there are a couple questions. Do you do you have do you address any of the differences between the Mac and PC versions in your blog? Yes, we have a blog. Um, I'm going to see. You know what? I'll see. We've got someone on with us today. Um, there's one that talks about PC to Mac and back. That's a great blog that talks about some of the things that they can do together. Some of the things that. Uh, they have in common and some of the things they can't do in common. And, and let's see if we can get that up in the chat. Stephanie, if you wouldn't mind finding that and putting that out in the chat. Um, they do have some serious differences that are difficult to deal with sometimes. The fact that, that the Mac version doesn't have a, a library like this, the media library, is a little bit difficult, especially when it comes to templates. Now, we do offer the, the our Camtasia templates through eLearning Brothers. We did export them for Mac, so you can use them, but they are used differently. Um, however, a lot of the editing principles are the same, and we do address that in those in the blog. Okay, um, there are a few more rolling in. I will just address right now that we may not have time to get to every question, and some of them may be slightly off topic or, or need to be addressed more one-on-one. -on -one. So if we don't get to your question, it doesn't mean we didn't see it. We will try to address it in the in a webinar recap or in an email uh, following up. But we'll let Andrew get back to his presentation and we'll jump in with a few more questions down the road here. All right. Thanks, Adam. Now, all of these uh, adjustments that we've made, these are primarily for dealing with the timeline and the editor. Um, if you're looking for some nice information on getting your project ready before you open Camtasia, I've written blogs and uh, Adam will post those links in, uh, in the chat, the first block. So um, I wrote a blog about Kim organizing your project files and getting ready for a project so that it's easier to bring all of your stuff together. And then you don't get lost. Or, or have you, <laughs> if you've ever opened a project and Camtasia says, hey, we're missing this file. And you're like, oh, shoot, where did I keep that file? And you spend 20 minutes trying to find it. Or a lot of the time you have to go and recreate that or re-download that uh, asset. That's the worst. So there's that blog about uh, organizing project files. And if you're wanting some tips on how to prepare your video, even when you're gathering assets, like bringing them all together, uh, or before you've brought them all together and you're trying to plan out your project, there's another one called um, How to Outline Your Video Production Plan. So we'll get those posted um, in the chat so you can grab those uh, as, you, as you like. So that's basic navigation. Let's talk about uh, some effects and uh, some useful tools in dealing with effects. I'm going to go ahead and control Z back to where this is just one file. There we go. Okay. Now videos, uh, as they are, have all the properties that come with them. Uh, right now, if I click and open this properties pane and have this video selected, we know that it's scaled to 100%. And that means, so if I come to my project settings, I know that my canvas is at 1080, the size of 1080. And if my video is at 100%, that means my video is also at 1080. Now I can shrink that by dragging the corners, make it smaller or even bigger as I want. Um, if I want to keep it centered, I can hold down the control key and then grab a corner and it keeps it centered on its, uh, on its center uh, axis area. I can also change the opacity in the properties and the rotation. I can either adjust it manually here, click and drag in these circles, um, but what I like to do is come right here off of the center, there's a little ball here and it 
uh, will help you adjust the rotation. If you hold down the shift key while doing the rotation, it'll help you lock into uh, the 90 degree rotations. Um, just makes those stick a little bit better. Other properties you can add um, will come to visual effects. So here's something that I might want to do with this. If I shrink this video and I want it to be a little bit smaller, maybe it's just a video that pops in for a moment, um, I've got to figure out a way to make it stand out from that black background. Now I might have something in the background, an image in the background that helps it pop, but something that I've come accustomed to is using this border effect. I'll click and drag that up to this video and it defaults at a very small thickness of one. We'll go ahead and drag that thickness up to the maximum thickness and now you can see it. It looks pretty good. It pops from the back. It gives it kind of that uh, nice border feel. Um, white's not a great color. I want it to be a greenish color. Um, that's a little too dark. How about that green in his shirt? So I can click on the color and then click on this eyedropper and then pick a color from his shirt like uh, that one. That's kind of a nice little mint color. And now that matches a lot better. Now I also want this uh, to um, to animate on to the screen and then kind of do a little bit of a rotation thing and then animate off the screen. So for the on and off I'm going to use behaviors, Camtasia's behaviors and I'm going to use the sliding behavior which is down here at the bottom. There's kind of a little preview. You probably can't see it in the GoToWebinar again because of the 10 frames per second but it shows you when you hover over it how it slides on and off. So I'll drag that onto this video and now in my properties panel it added a new tab up here at the top. So if I click on this first one it gives me those first scale ones as well as the border property that I added, the border effect. And then if I click on this uh, the uh, behaviors icon it shows the behaviors options for the sliding effect that I added. So when it slides in, I do want it to slide. I want it to come a, an easing in and an easing out. And I want it to come from the left, which is great. During, it defaults to having a fading effect. So if we scroll through that, it just kind of dims the opacity a little bit. And that's not great for what I'm doing here. So I'm going to come into the style and I'm actually going to select none. So that now, as I scroll through, it doesn't fade at all. It stays at 100% opacity. And then the way it's going to leave my screen, I do want it to slide. I do want it to be a nice smooth easing, and I want it to go out to the right. So it came in from the left, and it's going to go out the right. So I'm going to just come through it with my period key and the comma key to move it around so it's a little easier for you guys to see. Here's it animating in from the left and then it does nothing while it sits there because I got rid of the during effect and then here at the end it's going to slide out to the right eventually there we go slides nicely out to the right now while it's there I didn't like any of the behaviors in the middle showing what it did but I do want it to kind of pan like tilt a little bit like this um, on the screen so I'm going to come to animations it's got the zoom and pan tab and the animations tab. I'm going to click animations. I'm going to drag custom down onto my timeline. Now when it starts, so I'll drag my, my uh, scrubber to the very first point here. When it starts, I want it to be tilting uh, where it's further away on the side that it came in, on the left. So I'm going to come back to my visual properties. I'm going to come to the rotation and the Y axis, which is that tilt. And I'm going to select negative 15. So that tilted it to that direction. Now I'm going to double click down here on the animation, the larger point, to where it's going to end, and I want it to end at plus 10. So I'll just type 10. So it tilts the other way, but not quite as much. So now here's what this looks like as it is. So it's going to come in like that. It'll rotate while he's presenting to be like that and then it'll exit. But it's only going to happen during this little time, so I've got to make that longer. I want it to look pretty smooth and standard, so I'm going to make that animation last the entire time. So now as it slides in, it slides in tilted, and I'll just hit play. It's going to be a little jumpy, but you'll be able to see it rotating very slowly throughout his presentation. I'll skip ahead to where it's facing the other direction and then once it gets to that side 
it zooms out. So that is, a, that is using a combination of animations and behaviors. There's other properties I can do. I'm going to get rid of this animation actually by clicking on it, just the arrow, and then hitting the delete key. And uh, it keeps the original property, so I'm going to come back into the, uh, the property and hit the reset button. There's other properties that you can affect without clicking and dragging them from these property menus. You can right click on the item and it gives you um, a few options. One is clip speed. You can uh, click on clip speed and it brings up another property here in your properties panel and it also adds another layer here. So you can see all of your properties on your actual video clip, on your media. There's the border that we added, this clip speed that we just added, and then the sliding behavior. The pink is a behavior. So now that I have clip speed, I can adjust it in two ways. One is here on the properties panel, where it says clip speeds. Speed is set to one, uh, one time, so exactly the speed that it's set to. Or you can set it to be uh, actual amount of time. So here's 25 seconds. Uh, six frames is where I'm at here, uh, however many, oh, it's 25 seconds and six frames. So you can adjust those to be how you'd like. The way I like to adjust my clip speed is by coming down here, there's a little uh, little clock at the beginning and the end of the clip speed bar. If I grab that, and you see the little arrows on my, my arrow, my mouse arrow, I can grab that and drag it around, and this will make it slower, and this will make it faster. So you can use this to make it match uh, whatever project you're doing. So right here it's at 2.07 times speed and if I play through it it's uh, very fast. Now you don't want to do that on a PC with something that has audio because it will if you make it slower it'll make the audio deeper, if you make it faster it'll make the audio higher pitched. The Mac version of Camtasia will do some audio adjustments to try to make that uh, stay in the correct pitch. It has some pitch, pitch correction um, but it, uh, I mean, it has limits too. You can't make a two-minute video five seconds and expect it to sound right. Um, so that's that's how we can do clip speed. Um, another thing I want to talk about uh, is how to make these behaviors and animations and properties universal. So I'm actually just going to delete the clip speed because um, this this video doesn't doesn't call for it. Um, if I have another video, like this one, uh, you drag onto my timeline, and I want it to look and, and match this, the look and feel of this video because it's going to come on next, I can either go through and reapply everything that I just did and try to get it to match, get the color scheme to match, and stuff like that, or I can right-click on the original video and click Copy Properties, which is this original properties box up here, and now when I come here to this video and right click and then click paste properties, it shrinks it to make it the right size. And then on my original video, I want it to have that border, so I'll click copy effects. And now coming back to this video, I right click and click paste effects. And now it has that uh, border. It even copied the effect of the uh, behavior, the behavior effect. So now these two videos uh, go together, they look the same, they, they come in on the same side, they go out on the same side, and this works to my, my benefit as I'm using the carrots here. As this video slides out, then the next video slides in. And they look the same, they look like they belong. I can even have them overlap a little bit, so by the time this one is, let's zoom in a touch, by the time this one is about halfway off the screen, we want this one to start coming in. So as I do this, you see they really chase each other, and you can overlap those and make them look really nice. All by, you can get that universal feel by right-clicking, copying, and pasting effects and properties. So remember that properties involves position, rotation, scale, and opacity, and effects are all the other things that you add uh, to your timeline. If you have any questions about those, those were a little bit deeper level than I may have let on at the beginning. Uh, let's see. We've got we've got several questions. It may not be exactly what you were just asked talking about, but we'll go ahead and go through some of the key ones. Um, when working on Camtasia, I see that if I have added any effect such as zoom, 
and it is on one timeline after someone after some time if I add some more effects do they have to be on the same timeline or is it okay to have them on different timelines can you clarify please what you mean by timeline because as I know it this timeline is this entire segment uh, this is called my timeline and these are just uh, media objects so are you saying that you applied a zoom to the timeline or to a media object we'll see I'm, what... I'm assuming you're talking about a zoom and pan uh, I meant the track the, oh this track okay and you're talking about a zoom and pan, I'm assuming, right here in this animation segment? Uh, we'll see what she says. Yeah, right, yes. Okay. A zoom and pan operates a little bit differently. Um, for example, if I have these both on here, so right now if I hide this top one, you see that the, uh, the how to grill is still there. If I use this zoom and pan at this point and zoom in like this, it's applying to everything stacked right now in this segment. And that's because it is applying to the entire timeline. It's not applying to those videos in particular, but to the entire timeline. And uh, if I move this around, we'll have it sit here. Um, so it looks fine. And then the zoom and pan takes place where it zooms right in on the center and if I hide the top track, it's still zoomed in on the center of the bottom track as well. A zoom and pan, like I said, is going to apply to everything. It's zooming in on your canvas, onto your timeline, not onto actual media objects, but they do display it as uh, happening to your to the media objects, so that you can edit that lengthwise and, and, and things like that. Does that answer your question? I believe so, yes. Uh, so another question is, can you add, and I, I know there's debate on how to pronounce this, can you add GIFs to Camtasia's timeline in the Windows edition? <laughs> um, it operates them as if they're a video, as if it only plays through once. So if you click and drag a GIF and it only plays it out the once, it doesn't, it won't auto-repeat or anything, but you, sh you can bring in GIFs. And you can export GIFs, that's another big thing. Um, I we have a video of Taylor here and he's dancing next to the uh, sign and we've used it a few times um, and and at one point we made a GIF so we wanted this video I'm just gonna highlight uh, this segment of the video oh it's gonna have the behavior in it oh well it'll give you the point so we I've got this part highlighted and we want him to be able to I'm just gonna kill this actually kill the behavior um, so we want that to become a GIF. I can right-click inside the blue area that I've selected and select Produce Timeline Selection As. And it comes up with my general export options. I'm going to do Custom Production Settings and click Next. And then select GIF Animation File. And now I can export to make GIFs. And I can, once I come into these properties, I can make the frame weight different. I can adjust dithering. Um, on the next page, I mean, you've got your size. If you, I mean, this is a... 1080 video. I, I, GIFs won't be great at 1080, so I can shrink that down to be whatever I want it to be with custom settings. So you can export GIFs, and it'll read GIFs, but it'll read them as a single run video. Okay, along that same same lines is a, uh, is a question, has Camtasia, Camtasia added the feature of importing an image series and playing at 30 FPS? So, like, uh, trying to get your videos to play as a time lapse. I'm assuming that's what you're getting at. I'm assuming um, so. No. But yes, but no. <laughs> if, you import, if you import an image series and then highlight them all here and drag them onto your timeline, it's going to default them down um, as an image. Mine defaults images at five seconds apiece. So... Uh, I mean, they would every single image that you drag on your timeline would be at five seconds, and then you could select all of those and drag them down to be however long, but it's not easy. If that's your question, if they've got an easy way to read images as a, as a time lapse or as a video, uh, no. Camtasia right now really only wants to work with MP4s. Um, they've recently started accepting MOVs again, but they don't use uh, the QuickTime codec. They use a PNG codec, uh, so you may... Uh, find some back-end issues that way. Um, but right now, they really just want you to deal with um, MP4s. OK, 
Okay, good. And going into the comment you made about um, the audio and how it functions when you speed up or slow down on a Windows machine, you can still separate audio and video, correct? Absolutely. So these videos that I have here, they don't have any audio on them. I, I We've removed the audio because it was not important for these demo videos. But if there was audio, I can right-click and then select... Um, Oh, there's no audio here, so I'm like, where is it? It's it's right here. Separate audio and video. It's faded out. If there was audio, you could click that, and it would pull them onto two tracks, and then you can shrink or extend either of them as much as you want. And does the copy properties also work for audio tracks? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, let's see. A couple more. Zooming in sometimes affects the quality. Yes. What's the best way to avoid that? What should be the import quality? Um, always import in 1080 or higher. Um, I actually wrote a blog about that as well. Um, it's about uh, framing and frame sizes. Um, Stephanie, if you can find that one, it'd be great if you could post that into the chat. Otherwise, I'll get it out in the email after this webinar. Um, but the, the general rule is you don't want your video to be smaller than 720 your finished video. Once you're all the way done, you don't want it to be smaller than 720. And if you if you have a 720 video and you zoom in on it, it's going to get crappy. But if you have a 1080 video and you zoom in on it to 720, it's still going to be 720 quality. You're just going to be zoomed in bigger. So as a general rule, I always record in 1080. Always. And if I'm going to have to zoom in on it, then I change my canvas properties here, project settings, canvas dimensions, then I'll change them to 720. Um, and it will automatically resize for, for better, better quality zoom. So for example, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to delete the properties. Get rid of the in, get rid of the border, and I'm going to change the scale back to 100. OK, so this video is 1080, and my project is 1080. If I zoom in on it, I can try to guess um, how much, oops, I can try to guess how far in 720 is, guess how far I can get without getting pixelated or grainy. Or I can make my project, change my project settings to 720, and it automatically will zoom in to what that 720 is, and now I know exactly how far I can zoom in. Uh, to this video and still keep 720 quality. So if you are going to zoom in at all, uh, shoot in 1080, edit in 720, and uh, and you'll have have a, a much better time um, as long as you're not zooming way in. No matter what, if you zoom way in, you're going to get you're going to get pixelated. Um, and just for some of you beginners that saw what I just did and I did it really quickly. If you want to zoom in on your timeline, just visually, just for you to see it, you can use your scroll wheel to zoom in, and then your scroll wheel also to zoom all the way out. I like to do that if I have, like right now we're at 720 and the videos are 1080, so they're extending beyond the edge of the frame. So this way, if I zoom out, I can see the edge of those and not just the edge of the frame of my video. Um, sometimes I do this enough and make edits that it's hard to get back to where it fits nicely in this window or I've resized it by clicking here just above the playhead and dragging it down and now it's you know at a weird size so you can click in this drop down menu and select fit and it'll make it fit best inside this this window other questions uh, can you zoom into 720 for just part of the recording yeah absolutely yeah um, I would still keep it at 720 for the entire project like this so for example and again, this was in a blog. Um, Stephanie has posted the blog in the chat. It was a Ask Me Monday about video framing. Um, if you have more questions about this, please jump there. I'm not going to dig into this too deep, but I will demo this right now. So this canvas is 720, and you can see what the actual 1080 is around the outline. But this video that's here in the center is a 1080 video that I just shrunk to be 720. And if I'm going to zoom into it using the zoom and pan or however, I may want to just do my own animation, say so this animation custom. I want it to come into the 720 max. So I'll hit control and drag this down to where it comes out to the 720 size. And now it's zoomed to 720. 
and then I can use this restore animation and drag it down and it'll shrink it back down to fit in the frame again. So I hope that answers your questions. But again, check out that blog. That blog is going to go into it a lot deeper and, and hopefully answer your questions. And if it doesn't answer questions, tell me in the comments of that blog and I'll get to work on making sure it makes sense to you. We, we created this e-learning blog in the hopes that uh, you would get your, you would be able to get all the knowledge that you need to be able to make you an e-learning rock star. And if, if something we're giving you isn't making sense, let us know. We want to help you get there. Um, there's two more blogs, Adam, if you can paste that second block. Behaviors and animations, they do get a little complex, uh, but they're really exciting. So I posted uh, a blog about uh, Camtasia 9 behaviors, uh, which I showed you a little bit. Those are over here and some of the behind-the-scenes stuff for the animation features, which are here. Um, the pre-built ones are great. I work mostly in the custom, and then Restore is one of the best animations I've ever used because it eliminates 50% of my work, and I, I love having less work, so that's great. Any other questions before I jump into the last tip, Adam? No, so just, um, so we'll, uh, we'll re remind you again. We are posting links to those blogs in the in the chat window. Um, all of those links have been posted that Andrew has mentioned, as well as the kind of the overall uh, Camtasia resources blog. There's a lot of information out there, and I know that looking at the questions that are coming through, there's a lot of questions that again sort of go go off the scope of this webinar a little bit. Some questions about audio specifically, things like that, um, and. So we really encourage you to go out and, and read those blogs. And if there's something that's not there, again, feel free to um, to email the email address that we'll show you at the end, and 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 we'll get to it, or to make a comment on our blog, or to, or to reach out to us through our the chat feature on our on our website, and we will, you know, we'll make sure that Andrew touches on that. And there's so much information that we can we could give you that there's not enough time in one webinar to cover it all. And so we appreciate the questions, but. Andrew, we'll let you finish up. Again, all of those links have been posted that Andrew's mentioned between either Stephanie or I have, have posted all those links. They, those will also go out in the email uh, that, that goes out as a follow-up email to this uh, webinar. Um, and then you'll see, and then this webinar will be recorded as well so that you can get any information. If he went too quickly or whatever, you can go back and rewatch it. So we'll go back to you, Andrew, and let you bring us home. Great. Now, Adam has mentioned um, the Camtasia Resources blog. I've got a link here. I'll just go ahead and put it in the uh, the chat as well. That's just to all of the Camtasia blogs altogether if, if you want to sift through those. Okay, the last tip of the day I want to talk about is um, updating media. Now, this has saved my bacon more times than I can think of. Um, let's say that I have an image like this icon that I grabbed from the icon library. Uh, let's get this to fit. In fact, let's make it really big so you can see it even better. So I've got this icon. I grab it from the icon library that eLearning Brothers just released. Um, it says 45K in this little, uh, this little uh, box. Now, I may have put it here. I may have sized it and put it in a specific place for a reason. Um, and then we made changes or something like that. And let's say that it gets to the point where this 45K is going to end up being on a dark background. Now, I've already done a ton of work. I've already put it in the place it needs to be. I may have resized it. In fact, let's go ahead and make it bigger. Say I want it to be that big. But you can't see it. You can't see it anymore. And so I can come into my uh, visual effects and try to colorize it and try to make that uh, a different color. So let's try to make it white and it's just not working. I mean the colorize just isn't working very well. It's not, I didn't see it doing anything in fact. So I might have to bring it into an external editor. So I open up that 45K in Photoshop and I change it so that it's white. Now I export it as 45K dash white. Now I can right click and import that media which is right here, white 45K and then put it back in the timeline and try to match its size and scale and all of that stuff and uh, try to get it exactly where it was. Or I can right click on this image, select update media down here at the bottom, then select the new item, white 45K and click open. And it replaces, it puts that new media into the exact same place giving it the exact same properties 
and makes it incredibly easy for me to replace media as I need it. Um, the, the few things that you want to keep in mind when doing that, one is this is an icon, so it works much better small. You saw large, it wasn't looking too hot. Um, one is that these have to be the same size natively. So if the white 45K was 300 pixels, but the black 45K was 200 pixels, then when it comes on and sees that it's supposed to be at 200%, the 300 pixel 45K at 200% is going to be a lot bigger than the 200 pixel one at 200%. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind as you're replacing media. The main thing that I use the update media feature for is uh, images and graphics that I can easily make sure they're the exact same size. Um, and sometimes I do it for audio. Um, if I want to change the song that I'm using, I'll, uh, I'll use that update media to find uh, my, my material and, and swap it. Instead of dragging it in, dragging it onto the timeline, trying to get it to be the same length, stuff like that, instead I'll use uh, that update media. Um, there's other cool things that you can do uh, regarding media allocation and media uh, collection and management. The, on the PC version, there's this library. There's an awesome blog about uh, how to best utilize that library. Um, I don't have time to talk about that today. We've got to wrap up. But hopefully that update media uh, tip ha will be useful for you uh, moving forward. So that's all that I had covered today. Adam, if we had any last minute uh, questions that have come up right before we, we wrap up. Yeah, there's a, a question about can we add a frame or frames inside of a frame? A border inside of a border inside of a border? Uh, it says frame inside of a frame, but I, I don't... <laughs> I'm just reading the question. I'm not sure. interpreting it. Sure. I'm going to assume you're talking about borders. Um, and no. Border... Border is a visual effect that has to be applied to a media object. You can't apply it to a group or anything like that. So the the border that I put on here, right here, is all it will do. I can't I can't put that inside of another thing. I mean, I could export that video and then bring that exported video in and give it a border and export that video and do that a whole bunch of times before. I mean, I, I think that answers your question. Okay. Um, will Camtasia in audio, is there an effect in Cam, or a, a way to remove breathing in the audio editors? Yes and no. There's a blog for that as well um, where we talked about uh, audio reduction and uh, trying to, to make your audio sound better. If you click on that Camtasia resources link that I sent you, I did a, blogs, a set of blogs in August and September called Say What? A Guide to Camtasia Sound. Grab that, dig around in that, and that should help you uh, figure out how to, to get rid of some of your unwanted noises. Okay. And then someone asks uh, about the update media feature. That can that be used for other things besides images? Like, can it be used for callouts and and other such things? Um, like these callouts, um, I've never tried using update media on these because if I drag this callout down, I have all of these options that I can make on the fly adjustments with, so I don't have to worry about updating the media, I can just come into the, the properties panel and make those adjustments. If you're bringing in callouts from other places, for example, eLearning Brothers Camtasia library has uh, a bunch of callout packs, overlay packs, and things like that. And you can, you can use those because those are image files that you can just right-click, update media, and then switch them to a different callout. So they'll, they'll work the same. You can use it for everything. But these built-in style callouts that they've got, I mean, they've got all of these adjustments right here in the properties pane, so I don't know why you'd need to to make those kind of uh, updates. Hope that makes sense. All right, and then there's a question: Can you add a link to another video within a video? Add a link to a video? Yeah. Okay. Don't okay. you do that by using hotspots? There's also blogs in the e-learning blog about hotspots, so I don't have time to talk about that today. Um, those are underneath. <laughs> 
uh, visual effects, and then right here, interactive hotspot. And there's there's cool blogs about that. Got to go check out Camtasia resources, and there's plenty of, of breakdowns for that. But okay, yeah, and so you shouldn't have a problem so doing that. So there are, like like we've mentioned several times, there are a lot of blogs out there on Camtasia, and we could post links to all of them, or we can post links to the resources like we did, and and you know let you kind of go through. If there's stuff that's missing there, then then please again feel free to ask. Andrew's always looking for new blog topics. Yeah, let me let me put this up on the screen. In fact, um, let's see right here. And it's trying to switch. There we go. So register for a free account today. There's a phone number. But then underneath the phone number, info at elearningbrothers.com. Um, send us emails there. I am happy to, to dig into these. Today I just wanted to talk about some of those, those things that you really have to know to be able to become dangerous, to dig around in Camtasia and to get started on your videos and, uh, and be super successful from the beginning. Um, but if, I, if there's something that you want to know about and uh, you can't find it on the Camtasia resources, by all means, send an email to info at eLearning Brothers and we'll try to get, get to as many of these questions as we can. Um, I haven't been posting much about Camtasia in the last two or three months and I apologize for those of you that really uh, are digging through for, for useful information on Camtasia. But, uh, but let me know what you want to know and I'll try my best to make that information public for you. Um, that's all I had. Adam, you want to wrap yeah. this up? Okay, so again, we appreciate the, the great attendance, all the great questions. We know that we didn't get to every question on there. Um, we will try to address those through other means as we go. But hopefully this all made sense to you and, and you didn't miss anything. But in case you did, you know, please feel free to call or email us and we can walk you through any part of it. Um, there will most likely be a lot of people calling or setting up appointments, so please reach out to there tomorrow so we can set aside some time for you. We also have one-on-one uh, -on -one mentoring that you can sign up for where you could sit down with, with Andrew or other experts one-on-one uh, -on -one and, and they can go through your projects and, and kind of help you specifically on your needs. Um, you can reach eLearning Brothers at our website or email. The information is all there on the screen or call in directly and we'd be happy to speak with you. Uh, again, we'll be sending out an email to all of you in the next few hours that will include the recording of this webinar. It will include the, the links that we that we mentioned or that we posted in the in the chat windows, uh, as well as some links to some free stuff and links to our amazing Camtasia templates. So be looking for that email. Um, thank you, Andrew, for this great webinar, and everyone else, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Bye. everybody. See ya. We'll see ya.